Hi, Wendy. Hi, Sherry. Oh, it seems like it's been a long time since it we does. talked. <laughs> it does. It's around the same amount of time from the last couple of videos. I but it know, does. but so much happens. It, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Oh. Well, well I, yeah, I, think, I know you got a lot of stuff to kind of preempt the video. So what do you have going on? You have a lot of well, really good stuff. You know, the business stuff. stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Please like and subscribe. We'll get that over with right at the beginning because <laughs> it, <laughs> it helps us a lot. Oh, it does. If, if sure. you do that. And then um, I wanted to reintroduce my astrology program. You know, you can learn astrology in the middle of the night if you want to. <laughs> It's yeah, which is program, amazing. Very comprehensive. So good. It's a very good bargain, really good bargain. And um, then I am continuing to offer my half price mini readings for just $50. And I've had so many people respond. And so I'm just going to keep that going through the end of the month. Yeah, and we'll have all the, the links to all of this at the bottom. The other thing is my subscription program which for just a small amount of money every month, you'll be getting in on all of these very candid conversations about what's truly going on in the world, what's being disclosed that isn't in the mainstream media. A lot of people are contacting me. What do I listen to? How do I found out, find out what's being disclosed? Because the mainstream media isn't touching it at all. Well, and, and it's so, just that, it's just that astrology element as well that you can yes. bring in that perspective, which is so amazing. And so we'll be able to, I'll be able to really disseminate a lot of information. So sign up for this subscription program. We're calling it our um, uh, Wendy's Celestial Update family. So we are like a family and we like to be together and we like to talk. So I'm looking forward to working with everybody in that regard. So yeah, I look forward to it. Now, one other thing is my general disclaimer um, which means that when I talk about aspects, I'm talking about an orb of influence for these aspects. Now, I talk about them a lot being, you know, very exact, and that's when they're the most potent. But the range of expression time-wise can be, you know, a month, two months, three months, right. you know, before everything lines up together. So I'm just telling you what the, inf what the aspects are, what the energies are. And um, you'll see over time, we all will, when they happen. Okay. Yeah, it's like the ocean for me, like there's ebbs and flows, right? As the wave is coming in, the other wave's right. coming out. And there's this energetic, but the wave might start way back here and then it eventually comes crashing down, but it's an ebb and a flow. Exactly, and I'll be pinpointing some of the things that have happened, you know, on exact or very close to exact orbs. So this, this will be very interesting today. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the new moon one. So a lot's yeah. happened today. Oh my gosh, yeah. Very, very packed, packed time. It's been a huge month of transition, you know, and um, there's a lot of truths being revealed, a lot of expo exposure, um, and that the facts are out there, you know, and they can't hide them anymore. <laughs> They're there, and if people look for them, they will find them, okay? And people may choose not to believe the truth, you know, and that's an individual thing, but the facts are there, and we'll be able to talk about those, like I said, in, in the subscription Zooms. That will be a lot of fun. So um, this, this subscription Zoom meeting is actually on the 31st. That will be the first one. So if you're wanting to sign up, do it now so that you can attend that one on the 31st. And that's Monday night after Memorial Day is ending and yep. coming to a close. Was it like, uh, I know it's eight o'clock Eastern time, right? Well, I think, um, isn't that um, Tuesday? Uh, the 31st is actually Monday, is it? No, it's that's Tuesday. Right. Oh, you are right. Yeah, six o'clock my time on Tuesday. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So as we move past May, <laughs> you know, we're going to talk about this new moon in Gemini. We're still in eclipse energy, folks. Remember that energy of change, huge changes, is a, at least a six, seven month process. 
So don't think just because the eclipses were, you know, a month and two weeks away that it's over. No, it's not over and it will last for quite some time. We're going to feel these effects, you know. So um, we've been experiencing not only this new moon coming up, but Mercury retrograde. We're in Mercury retrograde right now. We're going to talk a lot more about that. And also the very hot and fiery combination of Jupiter conjunct Mars in Aries fire. <laughs> and we'll be able to see how that's affecting the world right now. The, the world is heating up, folks, as we can see. So I wanted to mention, too, with these crazy uh, energies, if a person is mentally balanced, okay, and, um, you know, just in balance generally, then their response to these energies is going to be in a balanced way, right? But when you get people who are mentally imbalanced, um, and, and you've seen some of that lately, then their response to these energies are, are just uh, over the top. They're very aggressive physically, you know, they act out in ways that are just uh, horrendous because they're not balanced. They're not wise. They don't have any concept of, uh, they're insane. Let's put it that way. They're literally mentally insane. So what so, you're saying is, is this is going to inflate whatever that is. If you're balanced, it inflates the balance. If it's right. imbalanced, it inflates the imbalance, which exactly. creates some of these issues that we've been seeing this week, right? Right. And um, just since the beginning of the year, we've mm -hmm. had over, I think, 250 shootings, like mass shootings. <sighs> it's like, and a lot of them, the media doesn't even touch anymore. They don't talk about it. Only, only the really ones where a lot of people are killed, um, do they even mention it. So anyway, I want people to, to be aware that the problem centers around these energies being so powerful and people being you know mentally out of balance that it really precipitates this stuff okay um now these energies that we're talking about the mars jupiter in aries can mean very powerful drive and focus and this is positive focus for freedom justice and truth Jupiter is the ruler of freedom. So when it gets around Mars, it's really aggressive. Um, you know, it can be aggressive in a positive way and it can be aggressive in a negative way. But this gives us that impetus to fight for freedom and us to want the truth. We want fairness. We want justice. So this is adding a lot of energy to these feelings that people have had actually for a long time. Okay? Yeah. These energies can also be very fanatical, and we've seen that play out lately, where, you know, their responses are just insane and fanatical, crazy, you know. So energies are very, very interesting. Now, this new moon in Gemini is about our mental functions. Isn't that interesting? How we think, how we process information how we communicate. Mm. Um, Gemini is ruled by Mercury. Mercury is retrograde right now, which is part of the problem, the combination of the issues. But it's, it's so interesting that, you know, Gemini and Mercury are so much about how we communicate. What does talk. Gemini, yeah, what does Gemini mean? I mean, I know each planet has its, and signs have their own symbolism. So what does right. that mean? Well, Gemini is ruled by Mercury, Mercury, so it's about your mental thought processes. It has to do with our self-talk, our inner chatter, you know. And most of the time, we think the same thoughts every single day. Like 60% of our thoughts we think day to day. Isn't that interesting? And so this is a really good time to think about our thoughts, to pay attention to our thoughts, and to start working on intellectual mastery, okay? Where we recognize when we're thinking something that isn't productive, we flip it into something productive. Like a, a common mental chatter could be, oh, I'm just such a screw up. Mm. No, nothing is working for me. And you can flip that. 
you know, immediately you have the power to flip that and say, you know, everything I do turns out well. Yeah. Everything I, I do is well thought out and productive. I know a lot of people say, oh, I'm so tired. I'm always so tired. Right. And it's like, I have so much energy right now. I feel pretty good. Exactly. And so if you start paying attention to that, you can really make a positive shift in your life. But a lot of people just keep going with the same mental chatter. Oh, I'm a screw up. Oh, I'm stupid. You know, whatever. I'm not good enough. I'm not pretty enough. You know, I'm fat or whatever. And you got to flip all of those things as you become aware of them. Then you'll start mastering your thought processes and start making progress. You know, um, I'm wondering, Wendy, if like all of these energies in this extreme polarity in the world is also like extreme polarity that goes with, on within yourself where Absolutely. you're in a transition as well and you're going from negative weight and now you catch yourself you're going positive and you sort of have these extremes inside but eventually the positivity has to win out so just yeah. like encourage everybody to just keep ignoring the saboteurs in your mind mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and of course we're all going through all of this um, reconstruction <laughs> with, you know, the higher frequencies, our bodies are being calibrated to the higher frequencies and it can affect our thought patterns. You know, it can affect, you know, our physicality. We've talked a lot about that with these ascension symptoms. And um, what people need to understand is this calibration takes a long time. And we can work with things that help ameliorate it and make it easier to deal with, but it's not over, folks. <laughs> it's how, long? Over. how long? How long? How <laughs> long? Um, I think it's going to go on for years. Oh. Okay, <laughs> and and I say that because you know the frequencies are going up and they're going to keep going up and keep going up higher. We're doing it in in little bits, little chunks, which are easier for us to calibrate and integrate. But over time, you know, where we are here, we're going to be moving up into here, you know, and so our bodies are going to have to have to calibrate each chunk, have to integrate each chunk. So it's going to take a while. Um, they, they're talking about everything I've read um, has to do with moving into the golden age where yeah. there will be peace I've heard that. Planet for a thousand years that they say won't be until like um 2032 so we've got about 10 years to be prepping and be ready for that so so you can just keep us in check during these videos <laughs> so we know how to move into 2032 <laughs> exactly. so it's going to take a while so um we want also as we communicate with others we want to find out how other people are feeling how they're thinking what's going on with other people this, this um, moon is good for communication, this time period. Let's talk to like-minded people, you know, collaborate with people. I think there's strength in numbers where it deals with moving in the right direction. You know, like you told me today about these people coming up with new medical um, medicines and products that are so much better for us than anything that we can get through the pharmaceutical companies, you know? So people are out there working, changing, use these creative ideas. You should be being very creative right now. And I'll go in more into what the reasoning for that is, what the energies are that are supporting our ability to come up with new ideas and to create. But just remember, Mercury is all about coming up with ideas mercury is uh, it has such a curiosity about it you know and it's constantly moving constantly wanting to come up with new ideas and to learn new things so and that's wonderful all right and but we need to get rid of the negative thinking and change yeah. it shift it to positive okay so all right let me get to my next one oh as you do learn, as you do talk to people, which I think is really important, and you start seeing the broader perspective, you know, about what's going on around the world, what is happening to others, and then using discernment and verify the truth. You've yeah, got to do ask that. questions. Ask, ask questions of people. Yeah. What was? What did you mean by that? 
What was your intention so that you don't misinterpret and see things through your own lens? Yeah, yeah. no, I think that's so important. Now, Venus moved into Taurus where it's very, very happy, okay? Now, Venus was in Aries. It's not so happy there. Venus likes harmony. Aries doesn't give a crap about harmony. <laughs> Aries is fire. It's out doing its thing, you know. But now Venus is in a very comfortable place. So this is a time for happiness and harmony, a time to be more loving, more empathy, showing love to others. Time to adjust our responses to be more kind and loving, okay? To move away from the impulsive responses of Mars and Jupiter in Aries. That's very, very impulsive. And go into the Taurus, the loving Taurus energy. And that's what we want to do. Um, it's great energy also for creativity and artistic expression. And um, we need that right now. I was just going to say that. We, in, yeah, I was going to say that we need that right now. We need something. We need some new creators and creative yes. people. You know, the, the yeah. old stuff is it's it was beautiful at that time, but it's like we need a new, fresh wave of creative people. Well, and what it does to us individually when you're involved in doing a painting or writing or playing the piano or whatever it is that you love to do, you kind of go into a meditation becomes a yeah. meditation and it raises your frequency. People don't realize that the creativity raises your frequency. No, oh, absolutely. So when you're down here and in the doldrums, oh, I don't feel like doing anything and blah, blah, blah. You know, your frequency stays low. When you get yourself into that creativity, it raises it. You get into a meditation, then you start feeling good about yourself. You do. And it's almost like an outlet because I'm a creative writer. So when I write something, I go into this zone, it just pulls me right out of the world that doesn't make sense to me and gives me some outlet. And I start coming up with all these creative ideas, just getting into that zone. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's wonderful um, to be able to spend that time. And you need sometimes if you're on a really busy schedule, schedule, you have to schedule it in. Yeah. Like sometimes like on a Sunday morning is a great time to do some writing, you know, or to do some painting when the world is quieter. Yes. And that's sometimes very helpful. Now, Mercury is the ruler of Gemini, okay? And um, it represents youthfulness. Did you know that? And when I do readings and I see prominent Mercury, I think, okay, what's going on with their children? What's going on with the child? Because it represents the child and youthfulness, youthful curiosity. So, can you remember what it felt like to be youthful? Mm -hmm. Young? Oh my gosh, I think about that. I think about running in the creek and picking up the pollywogs and playing and playing on the monkey bars and, you know, all those things. There were no inhibitions. Time was not present in that oh. moment. We used to walk, we used to go along and pick mulberries off the mulberry tree and just yeah. flick them off. And we were right by the creek and, you know, yeah. we were just, Parents didn't know where we were. We were just it's safe matter. and happy and yeah. And so think about what it would feel like in your body right now to be youthful mm. and see what you can do to create more of that within your life. You know, as we get older, we kind of get a little more sedentary and we don't um, venture out as much. And I think this is a time for us oldsters to say, okay, I'm going to do a little more of the venturing out than I've been doing just to add some spice to your life. Capture feel alive it. again. To feel alive again. Feel young again. Yeah. yeah young and alive. Yeah. yeah. And I know your daughter Misty has a dance program that the she does. And uh, that I just look at those videos that she's doing and it's just so beautiful and raw. Yeah, she does. She it's Playful. body group. She just filmed a whole bunch more of them. Um, yeah. She was in LA filming, and it's body groove on Facebook, and it's just wonderful. It is it's so playful, so much more youthful and playful. Exactly. Yeah. So that's really thanks for bringing that up because that's really helpful to a lot of people. Yes. So remember that those feelings work to diminish fear in your mind 
and the things that are scary. When you're creative and you're dancing and you're singing, you diminish all of that fear, you know, all of those scary things. And love and creativity, you know, and the beauty in the world is what you focus on instead of the scary. Yeah, it reminds me of The Grinch, you know, the movie The Grinch, when the people, yes. no matter what was going on and how bad he was trying to make things worse, they just kept singing. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so you want to overpower the fear, diminish the fear and the, the scariness with love and creativity. Now that's a tangible thing that you can do. Yeah. And sure. recognize that when you're happy, that happiness is catching and you make other people happy. Your energy that you portray has a big circle of influence. If it's negative, it's going to influence that circle in a negative way. If it's positive and happy and creative, it's going to do the same thing in that regard. So you need to be thinking about the mental process that it takes. And this is a good time to do it during a retrograde, you know, the mental process to make what you want and how you want to be a reality. Yep. You just got to think it through and then discipline yourself. And we've got um, issues right now that will help with your willpower and your discipline. So we, we have, uh, during this new moon, all of the outer planets are impacting Mercury. Every friggin' one of them. <laughs> Jeez. And so the first one we'll talk about is Saturn. We have Saturn square Mercury, all right? Which means the possibility of more censorship, Saturn likes to restrict communication, more control on communication. See, Mercury is trying to disseminate the truth. Mercury is the messenger of the gods, right? It's trying to give us information. Well, Saturn and the governmental and media entities, all of these are trying to suppress communication and suppress people knowing the truth about things. But one of the positive aspects of Saturn where Mercury is, you will have more willpower. It will give you greater real willpower. What do you resolve to do with that willpower now? What do you want to create in your life that's going to take a little more willpower? See, it also represents delayed gratification, Saturn Mercury. You know, we live in a society where it's a constant, instant gratification. I'm guilty of it. We all are, you know. It's not like we lived in the 1800s, you know, where you had to work and walk a long, long way, you know, to get anything. Now it's just at the tip of our fingers. But with Saturn there, it means delayed gratification. So we need to work a little harder to make things better. Now, the other thing about Saturn is that it wants us to ground our ideas to last long term. Mercury is ideas and Saturn is grounding. So we're not wasting our time. We don't want fly by night schemes. We want things and ideas uh, that are going to last as we move into the age of Aquarius. And that's a lot of what Pluto is about is destroying the old so that we can rebuild a powerful new um, world with, for the people with freedom and justice and freedom from the tyranny of the organizations and institutions, whether it's government, whether it's pharmaceutical companies, you know, whether it's religions, you know, whether it's the education system, you know, we could just go, uh, the medical, the hospital situations, all of those have developed because of greed, tyranny. They're controlling people. And we're going to be going to a time where that's no longer going to be happening. The people will rise up and create the new and, and leave the old behind. We're over here doing our new stuff and to hell with all this stuff that doesn't work anymore. You know, we're working on our own a future. Well, and I think it forces you to do that when you have a system that is just not working the best 
bore you, then you go around it and find a different way. That's how people create. Yeah. yeah. And that's what's happening now. There are brilliant people out there creating new stuff that'll right. blow our minds when we, when we find out about it. Right. We're coming into a time too where power and electricity will be free. Mm. You won't have to pay for that stuff anymore. There are a lot of things that are coming that are already possible that have been regulated so the fat cats can make money off of it at our expense. And in many cases to our demise, you look at the people who are suffering on the planet now because of this uh, pandemic, I call it, um, you know, they've lost their incomes, they've lost their businesses. They don't know how to make money, you know? They're floundering. And, and in spite of the suffering of the people, the electric rates are continuing to go up. Mm. I don't understand that type of thinking. People are suffering, so you make things cheaper to help them. <laughs> right, right, right. Craziness. Anyway, now the other one that's going on is Mercury is trying Pluto in Capricorn. Now, what that has to do about is learning things. Remember, Mercury is the messenger. Learning things we don't know. Deep and dark secrets wanting to be revealed. Info on the disillusion of government and institutions and disruptions and volatility with the financial markets and money. Okay, that's Mercury in Taurus conjunct or trine Pluto. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's also a time to ask some deep questions. This is about depth. Taurus and Pluto are deep. Okay. This is a time to ask deep questions like, why am I here? What is my purpose? You know, what's my path? This is the time to really be thinking about that. And this retrograde is a time to be thinking about that. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. So then we also have um, Mercury sextile Neptune. Now sextile is a very positive, harmonious aspect. And what it means is communication about spirituality, about creativity. This is a wonderful time to deepen your connection and to go higher and higher in your frequency. So spend time, you know, meditating, spend time reading wonderful books. I just read the most wonderful book and it's called the book of longings. Oh my gosh. I could hardly put it down. Just a beautiful, beautiful book. Um, Lars Mule has come out with a new book that'll be distributed called the light within the human heart. You know, start reading things that are uplifting and that are teaching you truths, great truths that have been around for a long, long time. Okay. About so, connection to humanity, right? Exactly. You know, and how literally to work with yourself to become, you know, a greater spiritual um, person, you know, a person that has control over who they are, who has mastered themselves. You know, this life and all of the lives we live are about self-mastery. If you don't want to have to come back and do it again, you got to master yourself in this life. That's the school that we're in. It's a school of mastery. <laughs> so, and this Mercury sextile Neptune uh, is very, very helpful. Neptune in Pisces. Yes. Okay, and it's time now to make your creative thoughts a reality. Okay, so really start working on that. We'll talk about that more in a minute too. Then the other thing that's going on right now is, um, or that that is happening with this moon coming up, is Mercury is in a wide orb to Uranus. Now, it's been that way for a period of weeks now back and forth because of the retrograde motion of mercury and it refers to news that is unexpected abrupt 
things that happen, violence and things that happen, and um, unusual things and issues, powerful issues, unexpected issues that have to do with our freedom. So that's another thing going on right now. <laughs> as, as we can see, um, these issues have been at play with what's been in the news lately, right? Unexpected, explosive happenings. Now let's talk about the Mercury retrograde, okay? Mercury is retrograde in Taurus, as I mentioned, and it goes, it actually stations direct on the third, but doesn't actually start moving direct until the fourth. Now I've talked to you about Mercury's storm phase. Mercury storm refers to the week prior to and the week after the retrograde that it takes Mercury to start moving faster. Okay, where it's comfortable. It, when it stations direct or stations retrograde, it's at a standstill and it is not comfortable that way. <laughs> and so it takes um, Mercury like a week to slow down to go retrograde. And it takes Mercury a week or so past its stationing direct to be going fast enough to be happy. So as we deal with a retrograde, you know, we always say, don't sign stuff, you know, don't start new stuff because it will get bogged down in the communication part of it. And so don't just say, okay, it's the day after the retrograde. I'm going to go out and sign all these contracts. No, give it a week. After the retrograde stops and it moves direct, take another week. And during this period of time, this is a time to think, to reevaluate, to rethink, to redo things, okay? Now, normally, um, Mercury is fast and in constant mental activity. However, in Taurus, folks, Taurus has the slowest mental activity of all the signs. And retrograde just makes it even slower. So our thoughts are not moving along at high speed right now, okay? They're slow. And so- Why are you stop, right? Yeah, this is a time to dwell on deep issues, to think things through, okay? Um, you wanna be involved in deep thinking, mental processing, deep contemplation and meditation, okay? So, and this is a really good mitigator right now for that powerful, explosive Jupiter uh, Mars in Aries, which is the opposite of this energy of the retrograde, which is slow, thoughtful processing, okay? So slow down, think things through, sleep on it. Don't act on it, sleep on it, and then decide how you feel in the morning. Remember that thought precedes emotion. And it's much easier to change a thought than to change an emotion and resulting action of that emotion. Change the thought, okay? Makes life much simpler, okay? Um, and it's good to respond with wisdom, of course. We know that. Taurus has a lot of wisdom associated with it, a lot of depth. and. So you wanna start thinking from that perspective, not the immediate gratification that we talked about, but delayed, think about it, okay? Delayed gratification. So when you respond with anger, what happens? You lose your audience. People are threatened by you. They're not listening to you. All of a sudden they're defensive, you know? Be kind and loving with people. Listen to what they have to say. They don't feel threatened by you when you're kind and loving in your communications, right? So this helps you to be very thoughtful about your influence in the world. You're gonna get a lot further through kind, kindness and lovingness and empathy than you are through anger and violence. And don't we all want to influence people? 
You do. What, what do you do, though, if someone's kind of throwing their anger at you in the moment? You're not the angry one, but someone else is angry with you because of something you're thinking or something you're believing that they don't believe. It's a good way to think about that and respond in a positive way without feeling you're giving your power away. Um, I always like um, that uh, quote from the Bible where it says, Christ is, is reported to have said, agree with thine adversary quickly. Now, I love that because um, it diffuses the argument. So a way to utilize that in a very positive way is to say, thank you for sharing your feelings with me. Let me think about that. Let me think about that. Thank you. Where can they go with that? <laughs> It's diffused the argument. And then you can go about your, your day and about your life and, you know, you can give it some thought, but if it isn't what resonates with you, then you just dismiss it. But you have successfully diffused the argument. And that's the point. If we argue and we just, you know, polarize sides, what do we get? Wars and all kinds of stuff. We don't want that. We want to do it in a different way a course in miracles also says the best defense is defenselessness mm. it's, good. Back. it's the same thing thank you for sharing you know and you be genuine and sincere right. about it you know and a lot of that also has to do with emotional neutrality when we allow somebody to mess up our emotions and we do allow it that we're so tied to it um we've lost our power we've given it away and so you want to stay emotionally neutral and when you are from that perspective then you can say thank you easily appreciate you sharing that with me i'm going to think about it yeah 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 That's so yeah, that, that's where we need to be coming from in this world of, of violence, you know. Okay, so we're moving into new territory. We're involved in dynamic change, not in just in the, this country, but around the world, okay? We can't see where that change is really going yet. Why? Because Uranus and Saturn are coming back into their third square. Oh. And, um, you know, chaos, anything can happen there. You know, when we deal with Uranus and Saturn, we're dealing with a pressure cooker. Okay. Saturn says, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. And Uranus finally says, oh, no more holding back. Bam! <laughs> you know, <laughs> explosion. So that, that they get back into um, 18 degrees, both of them. Um, in October, the first part of October. You said this is the third time, the third and Their final. Third and final square. Now, in in I think seven years, there, there's there's going to be a, a possibly an opposition. I haven't looked at it, an opposition, uh, or um, an, or another square or a conjunction. You know, every seven years we get something like that with Saturn. But for right now, this is the third, and this has been what's whipping the world up, you know, for the last couple of years, just bam, bam, bam. And so this one is going to affect the elections. You can count uh -huh. on that, you know, and, and we won't know until after probably December and into the first of 2023, how all of these energies are affecting the world. But what's also happening is a changing of the guard and we're seeing that you know biden just gets worse every day <laughs> poor guy you know he just doesn't have his mental fact he's not running the country you know obama probably is and and some of the the deep state is running the country but biden isn't running anything he's just a face they put out there but that's not going to last very long very much longer, okay? That's all gonna shift. We've got the queen, 
you know, she's she's out of there before the end of the year, both of Biden and the Queen, in my view, from what I've seen, are going to be gone. And so we're going to be dealing with whole new administrations in England and also in the United States. So part of the dynamic change that's coming, we don't quite know how it's all going to settle, but right. those are things that are going to happen. Um, now, let's see. The stuff about the elections, we'll talk about more in another video. You know, we'll get into the nitty gritty of that. What I wanted to end with, which I think is really important, I talked about the mental faculties of people. Now, on the 25th, where we had that last school shooting, horrific, horrific, terrible thing, I wanted you to know what the energies were that day. And I'd really like to do that kid's chart. I wish I could find it and find out, you know, where the imbalance was within his chart. So we had Venus square Pluto. Now, Venus isn't happy with Pluto. Pluto is shake up and break up and, and yucky crisis situations. And Venus is about harmony and balance. And, you know, Pluto and everything scorpionic is deep emotion, deep, dark emotion. So we've got Venus here in, uh, in aspect squared to Pluto. That's yucky feeling. That's bad feeling. It's deep, dark energies, deep emotions. So I'm assuming the shooter had some um, Scorpio in his chart. We also had... Um, Mercury trine Pluto. So communication about scorpionic things. And of course, the shootings are very scorpionic, very platonic energy. And then we had Mars semi-square Uranus, which is unexpected violence. Just bam, out of the blue. And um, we also had the Mars Jupiter in conjunction in Aries, which is violence and explosion. So we had all those things just on the 25th. Now, some of those energies were before that too. We had the other shooting the week prior to that. And all of these energies are in play. So when you think, oh, you know, nothing ever happens. Well, yeah, it does. Was such a wretches at your heart because they were just kids, you know. I mean, I know. You're, you're a mother, and you just try not to like you want to be sympathetic and empathetic, but at the same time, it's so hard to really connect with what actually happened. I mean, it's I know it, it's beyond comprehension, it really yeah. is beyond comprehension, it, unless you're right in the middle of it. And even then, it, I'm sure it was the parents are just reeling, but. This is a time for each of us to work on ourselves, mm -hmm. on our thought processes, our love responses and creativity to make a positive impact in the world. Isn't that what we want to do? Enough of us, that would be good. Yeah. If enough of us really work on that, yeah. we can make a positive influence in this world. There are a lot of people doing it, you know? And um, so that's my message. Make a positive influence by mastering yourself and your emotions and your thoughts. And I always look and see who I'm dealing with on that day. And you say to yourself, what if what I do today can just make a change for them? What if one kind thing I do today changes their trajectory? Yeah. You know, it's just something you need to really think about. And I look at somebody like this shooter um, balancing out his environment with his astrology. That would be a very interesting thing to look at, how much of it came from his astrology. And I, I have to tell you, there are times when people come to me to read their charts and I look at it and I go, oh my God, I don't say that to them. But it's like I want to hand it back and say, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh. They've come into this life to go through a really, really hard and oftentimes horrific life like mm -hmm. this fellow did. Now, I'm not in any way making excuses for him. It's just a study. 
we as astrologers learn from hindsight. What was this kid's background? How did it impact his astrology and his emotions? You know, and a lot of these shooters, a lot of these people who act out do have horrendous parents. Some of them don't at all, but others do. So it would be interesting to see what that balance is. Mm. Just a thought. Mm. <laughs> I'm an astrologer. I'm always thinking about stuff. Like, God, I want to see that chart and see yeah. why he did. What yeah. He did. yeah. 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 Well, thank you. So, Andy. Was, uh, you're welcome. I hope that was helpful to everyone. And well, what yeah. can we expect in the next video? When is that? Well, I think the next one in a couple of weeks, let's do Elon Musk. Elon Musk was too, too much, especially after all that's happened the last couple of weeks. I couldn't fit it in. I'm going to do him separate. Things will calm down a little bit in uh, June. There'll be some pauses in difficult energy. And so then we'll fit it in then in a couple of weeks. And so maybe also talk about the June energies as well. Yes. Okay. Well, that sounds good. Thank you. Oh, That's always goodness. good insight. Thank you. It's so good to see you. We've got to get together yeah. again. <laughs> we'll do. We'll see you soon. All right. Bye, everybody. Love to all. Bye. Love to all.